Hello, Jamie here from Inky and Scrappy, sharing with you today a project I created using two platform pop-ups and combining them using all Lawn Fawn materials for die cutting and stamping. I'm using the Lawn Fawn Fairy Friends, a few stamps from the Unicorn Picnic, and the leaves came from A Bug Life. I have already pre-cut everything out for assembly and I will start with coloring my images. I am using my Uhuhu Bullet Nib markers today to color all of my images. I start with dark and work my way to light, and I will list all of the color combinations that I use today on my blog post, so if you are interested in them, you can find them there at www.inkyandscrappy.com. For my wings, I used the markers from the pastel set. They're the only ones that I didn't use that were bullet that weren't bullet nibs. And I will color all of my fairies the same today. This one had a little finger ink from my finger on its hair, and so I wanted to make sure that I could color cover it up with my inks or with my coloring and not have it show through. So I did color the hair on this one a little bit different starting with that lighter tone to make sure that it would cover the little ink smush that didn't come off with the sand eraser. But for all of my hair on the rest of them I start with the dark, work the same way to the light to get the the strands or the individual the look of hair and then just blending that out. For my skin tones on all of them I only used one marker. Going in with my shade that I had picked out and then waiting for it to dry and then going back in and adding shading underneath the hairline and on the legs and the hands. And I added some pink to the cheeks and then blended that out. There are the colored images and some of the markers used. And then I am going in to my die cuts and coloring them in. With all, most all of them have the same colors as I used for my image coloring, except for the mushroom tops. I did pull in a different red for them. And I ended up die cutting this from some craft card. Some craft plastic. I was thinking it was cardstock when I did it and I didn't pay that close of attention because I was running through like 5,000 things on the die cutter or the die machine and so I didn't realize it until I went to color them that it was actually Yupo. But it does lend a really cool look to my finished card because the Yupo is kind of got that sheen to it. It's not you both craft plastic. It has that sheen to it and it, it lends a really cool look to the finished product. On my greens there, I had just ink blended with some distress oxides in mowed lawn and then rustic wilderness. I am taking all those little teeny tiny pieces and sticking them onto a full stick post-it note. And I will do that with my window frames as well. I am still working with one hand and four fingers, so <laughs> holding on to some of these little pieces was challenging to say the least. And I went in with walnut stain for the window frames and I colored them super dark. These I'm just going in with the black soot oxide ink and a mini blending brush and then for the stairs and the stovepipe. I used my alcohol inks in the same colors that I used for the other to add some depth and dimension. And I really do love the look of the alcohol markers on die cut images. I really need to do more of that because it looks amazing. And then I will just start assembling all the little things.
I ran my pre-colored images through my brother's scan and cut. And now I will ink blend on those four die cut pieces of the pivot pop up. So I did two sets, one for the two for the top and two for the bottom. And then I ended up cutting four T's for each of those, leaving that middle section to be something else. So I will assemble two of these, my top and one top and one bottom as I'm going to work from the back forward. In my original thought, I was going to do a full sheet of acetate in the middle, but I didn't end up doing that. I'm just measuring my piece of paper here to make sure that it's not going to be ungodly huge when it's finished. And then adding that adhesive before I get too much ink blending on there. It did end up sticking fine because I had to heat set the ink later before I could emboss on it. And I'm just cutting off all of those little adhesive that's sticking out. And then I scored this at one and a half inches from each end. And then I am going in from the for the inside. I am doing a darker shading with walnut stain and some tea dye. And then I'm taking that window cutout from, I think it's the pumpkin house, and running that through the die cut machine twice. And then I'm checking to make sure that my embossing powder isn't going to stick. I ended up heat setting it a little bit more. And then doing a very heavy hand with anti-static powder. And then I'm just taking those magic sparkles from both sets and adding in some fairy dust and then filling in where I missed a little bit and then I will heat set that and then brush off that anti-static powder and then I will start the assembly process. So I am doing the inside window frames and then I will add to the outside. I thought about doing acetate in the middle but I didn't think it was needed. The card will be busy enough in the end or have enough extra in the end that I don't think it was needed. But it would have been a cool look as well. And I did end up going in and inking or not inking, adding glue to all the moving parts. There's a few of the flaps that I missed when I put it together and after the fact I did go back because they would they separated because of all the the stress on the joints. They didn't stick as good as they should have, so I did end up going and gluing them and clamping them to make sure that they stay together. And I'm just adding a little bit of color into my top there. I don't think you see it in the end, but I didn't want it to be as light as the original cardstock. And now I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to get my lights to hang here, how to do some layering in there, adding in vines and lanterns. I'm figuring out my fairy placement. I want my fairies to kind of stagger so they're not covering anyone up or one does not hide behind the other and so working in back to front manner is going to allow me to do that and I just have my other ones there for kind of placement of what I was thinking where I was going to have them. They don't end up there but at least I kind of knew where I needed to build my scene around. And I used acetate picks on a lot of the things that are hanging down because those vines are very fine and thin and I didn't want them to break off or bend down and so this allowed them a little bit more movement or not movement, a little bit more stability in the grand scheme of things.
just me trying to find all my pieces because, you know, I'm about as organized as <clears throat> a toddler. And then the other thing with the acetate picks is just making sure that none of your adhesive is hanging over the edge. Because you don't want, you know, when it folds flat, you don't want it to stick to something that's not supposed to stick to. And then I decided that I wanted this one to come up from the bottom. So I had to do my bottom flaps. And I hadn't really decided how I was doing my bottom flaps. But I did end up deciding that the curved arch and wood would make for probably the best bet. And so I used the, the, the hillside bordered slimline die and just cut them from some scraps of that wood cardstock. And then making sure my back layer was higher, my middle layer was longer, and then my front layer was kind of shorter than the other ones. And then I'm just kind of adding in my mushrooms behind them. And that extra weight of the craft plastic does seem to add some stability to those extra layers there. And then I'm just kind of figuring out where I want the next set of mushrooms to be in between my other mushrooms. I wanted those big ones kind of staggered in there. And so this way I can add in my fairy to the back. And I did decide to bring her up from the bottom. And this is where I was trying to decide if I needed both pieces of acetate. In the beginning, in my head, I was thinking I would do a full sheet of acetate for my middle layer. And that was kind of why I started building my back first. Because I knew once I put that acetate layer in there, I wasn't going to be able to get back behind it. And I ended up deciding not to do it that way just because it I don't think it needed the full sheet for the stability. And I'm just jumping around here. I'm doing the front trying to make sure I get everything lined up so I can figure out what I want in that middle piece because I really haven't decided yet. And so trying to figure out where I want my third fairy to sit. And then adding glossy accents to all of those lanterns. And I had settled on at this point, I think I had settled on just using one acetate piece from the top to the bottom in a skinny strip. I might have been able to go a little thinner with it, but I wanted that added strength because, I, you know, that top platform really is kind of held up by that back piece where my back piece is very strong, but I didn't want it to be the only thing that held up that top platform. And so here's me trying to get that acetate piece in there. I did, again, do the score tape and glue to hold those pieces together. And then on top of the acetate, I made sure to put another piece of score tape so that it would stick. And here's me hoping that this works. So I lined, squished it down and lined that up. And then just making sure that it stays in place. With the, with the liquid glue in there, you kind of get a little bit more wiggle room than if you didn't have that. You know, if it was just that score tape, you wouldn't have the, the added wiggle room to line it up. And then just making sure that works. And that worked. Woohoo! I was happy. <laughs> Not that I had gone this far and then it didn't work. Granted, I could have cut it all apart and put it on top of a card, but that wasn't the point. This was, you know, my brainchild that I wanted to see if it would work. And then I'm just adding in a piece of scrap paper to help hold in that bottom layer. It could have been a T, but I didn't need to be a T. I just needed a piece for to hold that bottom piece in. And then I will put that middle piece in there and then add some more score tape on top of those two. 
and then finish up my front there before I put it all in because I figured it was going to be easier. And here's where the you know we're trying to line up that bottom. So figuring it out and then making sure that it's there. It did give me a little bit of wiggle room because I didn't get it the first time, or at least when I set it down, it wasn't lined up perfectly. So that really did give me a little bit of. And here's where I'm like, woohoo, it works because both of them. It, it lays flat so that was what I wanted it to do because I wanted to be able to stick it in an envelope if I so choose am I going to stick it in an envelope and mail it to somebody probably not this one would probably be one of those hand delivered cards because it's super fragile I don't I don't want to say fragile but all those little vines and stuff are very thin so I don't know if I trust the great <clears throat> USPS to handle it with the care and consideration that I think it needs but and here's where it pops up and it pops up and woohoo it worked I'm pretty sure my son was in the other room going really mom really we're we're you know hooting and hollering because some piece of paper worked it's all good I am just adding in some more lanterns to the top there and then decorating the front of, or the outside of, my little fairy house. And then I decided to add one fairy, and then another fairy. I didn't plan on using all of the fairies that I had colored yesterday on the card, but I'm extra, and they all made it on there. So adding my little outside lanterns, adding my other fairies, and leaves on the top because it's built in a tree so it should have some leaves. And then adding in the little fairy on the back. And I wanted the chimney to work so bad and I couldn't figure out where to put it. And I was like, oh, if I put it on top, because I wanted it sticking out the top. And I was like, if I put it on top, it's going to make my card that much taller. And it's really not, you know, that stable to put that little piece hanging out the top. So that didn't work. And so now I'm just going in, finishing up if I had some stickles. I added in some stickles and some other things for glittery effect. And there it is. It does lay flat and it does pop up. So the finished version set up is seven inches tall by four ish inches wide. And laying flat, it is eight and one eighth by five and five sixteenths. And it would fit in an A6 envelope. Well, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. 